Hello, and welcome to Inside the Green Room with PV3. I'm your co-host, Blair Bryant-Nichols, and today we've got a special guest, um, Clara Rose. As a content strategist, editor, and publisher, Clara Rose works with entrepreneurs who want to craft their messaging into a book and expand their influence. For more than 20 years, they have turned to Clara to help them identify their vision and mission statement, strategize their messaging, and create content and tools to help them succeed. Claire is the chief editor for Rosedale Publishing, a press mark that produces business books for professionals. She is the creator of the Brainstorm and Blueprint Method, a proprietary process for book building from conception through publication. Additionally, she is the founder of the Influence Builders Movement, an online group for sharing knowledge, tips, and tools for expanding influence. You can catch her on her weekly show, Influence Matters, Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern on webeamtv.com. And Clara believes success is a matter of influence, but influence is not accidental. One must strategically and intentionally cultivate influence, then success will happen organically. Welcome, Clara. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to, you know, always talk to someone else who supports speakers and and, and entrepreneurs and business owners in this industry. And I know that you've been um, helping them for a long time. So I want to kind of start with how you got started in this industry. And I know you're a speaker and author yourself, Mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit about what led you down this path and and what, um, you know, brought you to where we are today. Okay. Um, Well, I don't want to start with, you know, my birth or anything, but I do (laughs) want to say that um, I grew up in a household where my father was self-employed. And so I definitely grew up understanding that working for yourself was an option. A lot of people don't come to that conclusion until later in life when they think, oh, I think I could work for myself. I just grew up knowing that's what I was going to do. So I I'm going to work for myself someday so that I can make my own rules. Right? So, and I like that. That's part of my personality. I like to control my environment a little bit. So I, I kind of always knew that. And I did start my first business when I was 18. Um, of course, I was a terrible business owner at 18. Terrible. I didn't know what I was doing. I totally made it up as I went along. Um, in college, I um, studied communication. It fit my, um, definitely fit my personality, um, and I've always been a writer. So it was a natural progression for me when I started helping other people in business. I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, because then you'll know how old I am, but a really long time ago, pre-internet, my friends, (laughs) pre-internet, I was helping people create businesses. And we, it almost always came back to the same things, right? Messaging was super important. Um, so who they served was super important. All those things, it came back to writing about them and creating those messages together. So it just became almost accidentally my life's work <laughs> that mm. I would help people specifically Um, those business owners, those entrepreneurs in the early stages for a lot of years was those early stage people to craft their message, right? And cultivate influence for their business through the written and spoken word. So it wasn't something that I went to college and set out to to become or to do. It just sort of happened organically um, in my own life and my own business. And then as I helped others, um, I developed systems because I'm strategic. (laughs) Uh, Systems that helped um, them do things in a systematic way for an intentional way. And it became a kind of a shift in my life later on when I started deciding that I need to practice what I preach more, right? I'm helping these other people write, speak, and lead. I need to be more intentional myself, um, which of course led me to becoming part of the National Speakers Association. So I graduated that, I think 2013, 14-ish. Um, learned so much from them about being a speaker and um, the pieces that were missing. And that's where the light bulb really clicked in my brain that, oh, everyone needs a book. Everyone absolutely needs a book. So I shifted my focus in my own consulting and coaching practice from just where can we write to get you some influence to let's get a book created for you that's going to establish your expertise in your marketplace and cultivate real influence for you because we know that that's what generates leads organically for our business. We all need leads, right? (laughs) Because that pays the bills, right? There's mm-hmm. the revenue. So quite quite accidentally ended up 
helping people write and publish their books. And I've been doing that for a number of years now and totally love that piece. Love that. So lead, right, speak, lead, lead is also mm -hmm. leads for your company, but also being a leader. Yes. And it sounds like you almost did this in reverse. You kind of started out leading, opening, starting your own mm -hmm. business, helping others. And then you studied speaking and becoming, you know, more proficient as a speaker. And then you realized the book. So yes. what made you realize that kind of maybe you went in the wrong order? <laughs> well, you know, interestingly enough, when I was 11, I wrote my first book. Oh, right. Okay. So one of those, you know, take the notebook paper and, you know, create a little book and I wrote a book. I'm sure it was terrible. I was 11. <laughs> um, but when I was third, because I was a writer, just by nature, when I was 13, I had the opportunity to ghost write one episode of a children's book oh. about a little dragon um, and his friend, his friend, the boy who was an owner that anyway, years ago. Um, so I always I always had a passion for writing and I've always been a writer. So it's interesting that it didn't click in my brain that the influence and the book were so connected. It wasn't until the, the Speakers Association, Speakers Academy that I went, wait a minute, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> we all need a book. We all need a book, especially if you're a speaker. Oh my goodness, you need a book that just says, look, I'm the expert in this field, right? That points to you as the expert. If you're not necessarily because you're gonna get rich selling your book. People do make money on their book, but it, it isn't about that. It's about creating a tool that you use in your business. Just like speaking is a tool that I use in my business. I'm a speaker, yes, but for me, it's a tool that I use to expand my influence, right? Right. Instead of just getting paid to speak, which right. I still, I do that as well, but. <laughs> right. So yeah, covering all the ground in the, the speaking side. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I was, you know, excited to talk to you today at, at Adventure Reach. We don't do anything on the, the book side. We do help people with their, their signature talk, but mm -hmm. I started out in the publishing industry. My first job was the HarperCollins Speakers Bureau. They were the first publishing house to have their own in-house bureau, um, something they started back in like 2005. Um, and you know, I had, I, had, uh, I was a lit major. I was also a writer as I was young and I was trying to figure out like, what would I do in this industry? I thought, you know, maybe I'd be a lit agent and I interned with a lit agency and I didn't like reading tons and tons of, you know, proposals and manuscripts that would ultimately sure. just kind of get tossed aside. And so it felt like kind of daunting to go in that direction. And um, I ended up, you know, getting a job at the HarperCollins Speakers Bureau and, and not really knowing that this whole industry even existed. So my introduction to the speaking industry was authors now obviously have a platform to go and speak. So to me, it felt kind of obvious that anyone who's written a book had something to talk about. And, you know, maybe not every topic is going to demand tens of thousands of dollars or not every person has that, you know, name recognition that can really demand that kind of fee, but I could imagine how there would be an audience for every type of book. Just even if it was, you know, libraries or historical societies, there's every book that's written, you know, obviously there's a story there and there's more that could be talked about and discussed than just what's in the pages. So I love what you're doing with entrepreneurs and helping them start with that because I think you're right. It does really help establish kind of your core expertise, your, you know, subject matter expertise, and but also it helps meeting planners and people who would maybe book you as a speaker kind of get a grasp on what you're all about and what you could talk about. You can list your speaking topics and that's fine, but I think a book does like offer kind of a, a different level of credentializing you on that particular topic and it gives them, you know, something to like chew into more. So I wanna start on the, since you start with the right part, like I wanna start with the, the right part. Like how do you take people, I know you've got, you know, you can do it yourself or you've got, you've got ghost writers that help as well. So tell us about how you, you start working with your clients and, and leading them through that process to create their first book. Okay, so the very first thing that we do, I call it brainstorm and blueprint. And that's the book building process that I cre created a couple of years ago, actually a little bit longer than that. They created a digital version in 2018 to help kind of leverage some of my time. But that's really about getting that content out of their head and onto the page where we can do something with it, right? People say, oh yeah, I've been wanting to write this book or I've been writing this book even worse for 10 years, right? <laughs> like, okay, so clearly 
you're having some difficulty getting it out of your head. Right. So that's what this process does. And so everybody that I work with, whether I'm going to ghostwrite for them, you know, one of our writers are going to ghostwrite or we're going to co-write, which is that collaborative process where they actually do the writing, but then we do all of the developmental editing of it and pulling it together into a cohesive message. Everybody starts in the same place and that's brainstorm and blueprint. And the reason for that is that's the, that's foundational right? We need to get it out of your brain, right? And then we need to put it in an order that makes sense for the reader. And it's probably the number one mistake that I see when people say, I'm going to write a book. They sit down and they start at chapter one and they just start writing. <laughs> well, <laughs> the problem, the biggest problem with that is you're kind of meandering, right? So whatever pops into your brain, you write that down, right? You, you head in that direction. Or you have 500 little sticky notes. I have a great story. A lady a couple of years ago walked into my office. We're getting ready to do her brainstorming blueprint. And she opened up her bag and turned it upside down. And millions, not millions, maybe all of these pieces of paper, <laughs> sticky notes and note cards and post just like fell out of her purse, which is this pile. She's like, that's how I've been writing my books. <laughs> like, okay, so we collected up all of these pieces <laughs> and had to make sense out of them, right? She, she didn't know how else to make sense of things. So that's what the Brainstorm Blueprint does. We get it all out of our head or off the sticky notes or you know, whatever you're using, notebooks, however you're collecting your thoughts, and then we put it into an outline that makes sense and that's cohesive for the reader. Nice. Right, that pulls you along. Now you have something to write from. Right, seems like a no brainer, but people don't do it. Right, so now let's start with chapter one, and that's the next phase. If you're gonna write, I'm gonna help you with the editing piece, and I'm gonna make sure you're sticking to the brainstorm and blueprint outline so that you don't meander. Right, mm -hmm. let's get that chapter written, edited put to bed, set aside to cool. Now let's work on the next piece. So when it's done, you have a manuscript that really is going to be a tool that you can use for something and isn't a bunch of rambling and you actually finish it. <laughs> so there's a perk right there. <laughs> yeah. It's so important to give people kind of steps to follow and mm -hmm. how to break yeah. it up because I think you're right. A lot of people approach all different types of creative projects with the end in mind and, and they just see a really far off in the distance, you know, what that looks like. So taking it one step at a time and breaking it down like that, I think makes a lot of sense. And, you know, most book proposals, um, when people do, a, if they don't have a full manuscript, they need at least an outline, you know, especially mm -hmm. we're talking about nonfiction. We're not talking right. about no novels here. Right. So with nonfiction, you know, book agents, if they decide to go that route, they need at least a sample chapter and an outline. Mm -hmm. They need to really have a clear understanding of what the book is is even if they don't have every page written. So right. it makes a lot of sense to help them break that down because that blueprint really becomes like an outline where they can then follow that and then they can start getting feedback even if they, they needed to, to get moving on that. Okay, and so how do you move then um, from the book in, into the speaking side? And I wanna hear a little bit more about what you learned and the, the key things you took away from the NSA Academy as well because I, I haven't heard as much about, about how, they, how they approach it. So the, um, the National Speakers Association has um, academies all over the U.S. that you can participate in. And I live, you know, near Tampa, so I went to the one here. And they have a very systemized approach to um, the process. And it starts with, just like anything else, why are you doing this, right? Why are you doing this? Who is your audience, right? Just like... Any expert you brought on this show is going to say, why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? How do you do it? Right? It's the same kind of approach with the Speakers Association, helping you get clear on your message because your message matters, right? Get clear on who your audience is because your audience matters, and then get clear on how you want to present yourself. So they help you write that signature speech, and they help you put together the tools to move you forward as a speaker. And then as an added benefit, right, you can also become a part of the, the organization at large and 
become a professional speaker right there with them. So they have um, steps that they help you go through to get that speaker designation. You get the cool little pin and you know, all those things. But then beyond that, you're kind of on your own to take that next step. Now, I think that's the thing that probably attracted me to Pete when he started the rise up. I am like, ooh, I need to pay attention to this because the, the piece beyond what I do, I'm always looking for places to send people, right? <laughs> I don't teach people to be speakers, right? I'm not a speakers association and I'm not going to help you get on that stage, but there are places and people and professionals like you guys to help with that, right? So that's a natural, it was natural for me to want to learn about what you guys do because that's a natural place for me to send my clients. Also a wonderful place for people who end up in your field of expertise or your audience that don't have that book for, to say, mm -hmm. hey, here's a place you can go and get that help. Um, so back to your original question about the how I help speakers, that, pro that progression, we start with the book, of course, right? We started with the brainstorm and blueprint. Um, I have something called Everything Matters, and we talk about front matter and back matter and core, core content and all those people pieces that people don't know what they mean, but they need to understand, right? Then we work on getting that manuscript done. Now it's like, okay, now you have a tool. Let's talk about your signature speech. I'm not gonna write your speech for you, but I'm gonna help you, or I'm gonna send you to somebody who will help you with that. And then I'm gonna say, okay, you need this, 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 and this. You need your one page, your speaker one page, you need professional headshots, you need, and give them a list, here's stuff that you need if you're gonna really be a professional speaker or you're gonna speak as a tool for your business, right. in your business. And here's where you can go and get that. I'm not gonna do that for you, I'm gonna say you have needs, here they are, here's some great places where you can go and get that. So I don't know that I'm, I'm helping them as speakers so much as helping equip them to use speaking as a tool within their business. Absolutely. I mean, and you, um, you know, you cover the, the core basics, something that we do in our stage execution workshop is help people get build out their speaker kit, actually take the headshots for okay. them, film their YME video. And then those That's are important. people that have, you know, become eligible for our agency. So our agency is what right. helps put people on stages. Um, and, and I think you're right. It's, it's interesting, you know, when people either start with the speaking side, but they haven't quite figured out what their core message is. And, and, you know, I, I think a lot of people could, you know, go through the exercise of doing the book, you know, going back and, and writing a book, because I think it gives you that much more time and meditation on what your topic is. And you mm -hmm. don't have to, you know, it doesn't take as much extracting then once you've already gone through all that, because that you always will have that. You will always have that book to, you know, leverage and, and position in different ways. And I think, you know, I, as a speaker agent, we often had clients and we'd say, we need three or four topics. We need to make sure that we can hit on everything. We need to talk to this audience and that audience and that audience. But through the years, and we've talked about this on this show before, I, I think it's right that a speaker really needs a core message. And if they have a core message, it can apply to all different types of audiences with just, you know, tailoring what's relevant to them. You know, when you have a, a business idea or a lot of different things, it can, you can have an ideal audience, but I think it can talk to different parts of a company, right? So we would go over like, oh, this is how you talk to sales and marketing, or this is for leadership, or this is for HR. But Oftentimes it was the same message, just the title changed and a little bit of like the kind of <laughs> beginning and end, you know, a little bit of the customization. So um, I think you're, I think that's, that's awesome. You know, just anyone that's helping people distill into their real signature talk, I think is so valuable because you need to be confident in that and then just understand how you can kind of tweak it to speak to different types of audiences, even though you may have like the ideal target audience as well. But I want to hear about your speaking as well, because you, okay. like you said, you graduated and they're kind of like, now you're on your own, go out there and speak. <laughs> yeah. So how did you, how did you get started with getting yourself booked for speaking engagements and, and building that side of your business as well? So it was interesting. It was uh, um, in 2013, 14, uh, you may or may not be aware there was a, a 
huge change in the ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act, um, a kind of a huge revamping, and it really impacted the hospitality industry. And I was actually doing some writing in the hospitality industry. I'm just a writer, so I'm, you know, I was, you know, in operations magazine and perspectives, and I was doing a lot of writing. And that was happening at the same time that I was graduating from the Speakers Academy. And the people were talking about compliance, compliance, compliance. I'm like, okay, but what nobody's paying attention to is sensitivity, right? Let's talk, let's have a new conversation. Let's talk about um, disability sensitivity, right? All the litigation is coming out of perceived slights. So why is nobody talking about, let's, let's be sensitive to how we interact with and treat People have a disability. So I started marketing directly to the hospitality industry that topic. I just reached out and said, hey, I want to come talk about this topic with your, I mean, they already knew me as a writer. I was already, you know, showing up at their events and writing for them, um, writing for magazines that were relevant to them. So it was super easy for them to say, sure, yeah, come on out. So I spoke a lot um, for a couple of years about disability sensitivity. Ended up doing my first in DVD from that. <laughs> that was a while back, so DVD was relevant at the time. Um, wrote my first actual workbook and course at that point, which just shifted my mindset and what I wanted my business to look like and started shifting toward finding speaking engagements for myself that um, were relevant to what I was working on at the time. And I've used that same philosophy. So wherever I'm at, whatever I'm focusing on, um, I, I use that same philosophy to get my, my speaking engagement. So I break the last probably four years, I've been really focused on strategic and intentional influence, right? Building strategic and intentional influence. And it's relevant to anybody in any industry. So I let them decide how that affects them. And almost everyone's, oh yeah, we could talk about influence. So that's how I speak. I don't, I've never used a, uh, an agency, although I am looking at yours because it's interesting, <laughs> right? Um, because you guys remove that piece that I don't love, right? I don't love that going and finding the deal and booking the, I don't love that piece. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys do that, right? Isn't that what the agency offers? Yeah, right? we focus on the research and reach out of finding the right stages for nice. your ideal audience and then, you know, getting them introduced to you and handing that off for most of our clients so that they they can do what they do best and talk about their expertise and then go and deliver powerfully. That's gold right there, my friend. Because <laughs> right? that's the, the not, not the fun part for most speakers, right? They're usually not wired that way. Right. Well, what I love what you were just talking about, Claire, is, is how the connection between writing and speaking again. And mm -hmm. not to say that you don't need a book, but it can start as you're just writing, blogging, writing for publications about whatever interests you. And I, I want to encourage people, you know, to think about just starting to write anything. You know, I've done some LinkedIn yeah. posts and like, I'm always like, I need to do more because when I do it, just, it really helps me tap into what I'm passionate about. And you mm -hmm. might not even realize really what what subject matter you're interested in. How did, was there something personal or, or how did you get interested in the ADA and, and talking about sensitivity to disabilities? Was that something you had worked in that field before or nope. what kind of brought you to that? I, I had no experience with it. It really was that at the time that I was in the Speakers Academy, my husband was doing um, reserve studies, he's a reserve analyst for the hospitality industry. So he's going into uh, resorts, timeshares, things of that nature, and looking at their reserves. What do you have set aside for reserves? You know, so you know how much to charge people for their their reserves, right? That's stuff that people hate to pay for. Um, but that got me interested in the topic because he was out there talking about it. And then this huge thing from the ADA making these all these changes. So it affected my life in that it was affecting my husband's life. Mm. And so as I would hear him rant about things, right? You know, I just jumped on the bandwagon. Pretty soon I'm writing about the topic. Pretty soon I'm, you know, speaking on the topic, creating DVDs. And so it wasn't intentional for sure. I just, it just, I just got sucked in because of, of my husband's work at the time. So I think that can happen to speakers where that 
other things in life pull them into something. I'm not like hugely passionate about the ADA, you know, particularly, but it opened my eyes to how people who do have a disability are sometimes treated differently. And that kind of set my soul on fire. It's like, hold on, you can't talk to them like that. Right? You yeah. can't treat them like that. So it became a passion kind of after the fact. I, I don't work in the industry now, um, but I still, if I hear something or see something like, oh, hold on, you know, that's not very sensitive. <laughs> it changed yeah. me. Yeah. And I, I think that's like, you know, a lot of journalists, they, they might not approach a topic thinking that it's, you know, their core interest. They just have a curiosity or an exposure to, and oftentimes that, you know, could become a bigger series for them or turns into a book. I think it's a lot of people don't realize that oftentimes authors get approached by agents because of something they wrote just in an article or a blog or an op-ed or something like that. So I think it just kind of, again, reinforces the power of, you know, scratching that curiosity and actually putting pen to paper to write down and, and discuss and research and look into something that interests you because you don't know where it may lead. It may lead to mm -hmm. something really exciting. And I think it's also interesting how people take complete pivots. They might have had a career in an industry and they might have, that might be what they think they're going to be doing their whole life, but they might have a significant life experience or that, you know, something may happen to their child or a family member. And that becomes a cause for them. I've seen a lot of people, you know, kind of their whole life kind of changes. You know, um, I used to work with the woman whose son inspired the, um, the ice, ice bucket challenge for, for ALS. And, and that became, she was in banking. Her and her husband were in finance their entire career. Careers and now that became this huge cause for them. And now, as they're speaking and their books and everything, so um, I just love how you know this. You know, it it can be so daunting to think about how would I ever find something to speak about or write about. Well, start with anything. Start with something that just interests you and mm -hmm. see where it leads. And then you'll you'll find where you want to bring that intentional influence. So I want to shift into the third part of okay. your, your mantra and the leading part, because, you know, we, we in our agency focus on exposure and getting people out there because we also agree your message matters. Um, but we don't talk as much about influence and how that really is, you know, kind of an output of speaking. But I want to hear more about how you then approach getting people ready to become leaders and, and using these tools to then help create influence. Okay. Um, so the leadership piece, right? And I you hear that all the time, if you follow me at all, right? Speak lead because influence matters. It's just a part of influence. And I actually quite accidentally discovered this as well, right? So in my journey with the NSA and going through the Speakers Academy, um, I wasn't even done with the Speakers Academy yet. And the Dean said, would you be interested in being the Dean of the Speakers Academy yes, next year? I'm like, interesting. I, I Maybe, you know, let's talk about that. At the same time, somebody had invited me to the Association for Talent Development, ATD, which is all about um, trainers, developers of training, people in that world. Um, and I had gone and then they had, they asked me within like a couple of weeks to speak um, and they had a board position open. And they're like, hey, who would be interested in being on the board? I'm like, I'll be on the board. <laughs> right? So bam, I was on the board of this organization that where I met all of these wonderful trainers and speakers and, and consultants and all these people working in the training and development field. And it, I started to put together in my head well, I'm gaining real influence in this organization because I am giving of my time to be on the board because you know you don't get paid for those things, right? <laughs> we just those out of the goodness of our hearts. Um, so it became a a five year stint actually on the board. I didn't intend to do that, but it was a couple years in. They're like, you know what? You'd be a great president. Would you be willing, you know, to take on the presidency, which is a three year term? You know, president elect, president past president, immediate past president. I'm like, sure, I'll do that. But by the time I was done with those few years of the Association for Talent Development and then my time with the NSA um, and a couple other boards along the way, I had figured it out that, you know what, I'm gaining real influence in these organizations and with a lot of people that's generating business 
leads for my, my business, right? It's because I'm giving of myself. I'm showing up, I'm speaking up, I'm making a difference. And so that's what I teach. In Leadership Matters, show up, speak up, make a difference. Find places to get involved that matter to you where you can give up yourself and, and take on leadership roles because that's going to naturally give you influence. So really it's being strategic and being intentional about building influence for yourself through leadership. Plus then, guess what? You feel pretty good because you gave back, right? You made a difference in the world around you and that makes you feel good as well. So I like to, to point out to my, my um, authors, my clients, whatever you want to call them, that influence is just the capacity to affect a character development or behavior change. That's all it is. It's not manipulation. It's just the capacity to affect change in others. And that's what we really want. We want to have, create that capacity within ourselves to affect change in others and their behaviors or their character and others. So write, speak, and lead. That's how you do it. Write, speak, lead, because influence really does matter. And I love the intentional piece because, you know, kind of wrapping up everything we've talked about, you can kind of stumble into being an author, stumble into a cause or speaking on something yeah. that, you know, may interest you, but maybe that isn't, you know, your, your final intention or something that's really going to just set your heart on fire for the rest of your career. So mm -hmm. finding the intention, finding the area of influence that you really want to, you know, exercise in your life, I think is so valuable. And I, and I love the volunteer aspect. I, I grew up with a mom that, you know, was always going to all the different committees and board meetings and nonprofits and still in her retirement is doing that. And I'm now just kind of following that same footstep on boards and just, you know, wherever people ask me to help, I'm, I'm always saying yes. And I need to learn to say no sometimes, but <laughs> sometimes, but, <laughs> sometimes, but, but it's, but it's also fun. It's fun to, you know, stretch kind of different parts of yourself and, and understand maybe really what your calling or purpose may be. If you're, you know, listening to this and you're kind of struggling to figure that out, I think volunteering with an organization, getting involved, like Clara mentioned, is a great way to get started and really start honing some of those skills. Because if you're on a board, there's going to be meetings, there's opportunities okay. to speak. Like a lot of people just don't even know how to get started in, in, a, in any of the three areas. So I think that's a great way to get started. There's so many organizations that could use your help, you know, nonprofits could use your business advice and, and vice versa. So that's really wonderful. So Clara, everything you shared today is so valuable. I, I hope our, our listeners are, are um, you know, writing things down because they're, they need to get writing and exercising that part of it as well. But, you know, part of our audience is also meeting planners, event mm -hmm. professionals. So I just wanted to touch on, you know, your experience with both the NSA, ATD, and, and, and working with meeting planners. And, and what is your advice to your clients, your authors? I know you're not helping them get on stages, but you're prepping them to, you know, be powerful and influential. So how do you, you know, what do you share with them about working with meeting planners or events in general? And, and, and what do you do to prepare and make sure that you can, you know, make sure that you make every event you're a part of as much of a success as possible? I'm definitely always preaching that, um, that you need to be making a difference, right? That's, and part of that is just my own, you know, spiritual side of me, you know, being a believer uh, that's, definitely part of it, show up, speak up, make a difference. Um, but I, I want my, my authors to understand that participating in an event, that you're just a piece of that, but what they're intending to happen or what they're intending for the end result to be is important. So finding places that you feel good about connecting with and speaking, I think is part of it. Um, but then we really just focus on where is your message going to fit, right? You want to be authentic to who you are first, of course, but where's your message going to fit? So if you're, let's say, for instance, a realtor, we're probably going to write a book together about real estate, right? Because right? that's a natural fit. Okay, where are you going to find speaking opportunities? Well, there are lots of associations or groups out there that 
of realtors or groups of people who work with realtors, right? So then it's about finding those places where your audience naturally is. I guarantee you that every luncheon, every breakfast, every dinner meeting for every association under the sun, they're looking for speakers to come in, right? And mm -hmm. talk on that topic. So whatever your topic is, go seek them out, right? Go have a conversation with them. I'd love to come in and do a quick lunch and learn with you, get in front of your audience. Like I mentioned it, for me, it's not about that paid speaking gig, although I do like those as well. I do pay for my time, but those little 20 minute, 30 minute guest lecture things, that's gold in your business, right? That's influence in your business. So don't overlook those little things, those places where you can go and connect with your audience that you're after. So start there and um, connect with the local speaker, um, event planner, not speaker, event planner, um, and see what they have perhaps that you might be interested in, in going out and participating, be a part of. You know, I, I'm less in, intentional about where I go and help people. I'm super intentional and strategic about what it does in my business. Sounds, it can sound harsh to somebody who's real woo wooey, but if you're not strategic and intentional about building your business, um, it eventually will catch up with you. Yeah, I mean, and that's our approach too with the agency is it's, it's about opportunities to speak that are going to impact your business. It's not right. just, I'll speak anywhere as long as they pay. Right. You know, that's, <laughs> right. that's, that's not, that's not long-term value, you know, right. <laughs> it's right. short term. Um, and, you know, this whole conversation has brought me back to, you know, my earlier days in publishing and thinking about all this stuff. So I almost forgot about the situation we're in and now in 2020. So uh, I'd be yeah. remiss not to ask, you know, how has uh, COVID and everything affected your business and, and how has it shifted, you know, the conversations you're having with your clients and authors and, and what you're helping them, you know, kind of understand and grapple with right now? Well, of course, it's definitely been a shift for all of us. Um, luckily, in 2018, I made a shift um, and created the digital piece to the Brainstorm and Blueprint so that I um, wasn't doing it in person anymore. So I used to do it in person, right? Mm -hmm. We'd get together and do a Brainstorm and Blueprint. And so that was a big change um, in the last couple of years that part of it they're doing on their own without me. Right? I'm still here to help. Um, and then in 2020, of course, when we couldn't get together, we just were 100% reliant on doing everything through Zoom or you know whatever is out there that people are using. I use Zoom. Um, my clients, depending what industry they're in, have struggled, of course, with how do I pivot? So we've had lots of pivot and thrive conversations right, this year. How do I pivot what I'm doing so that my business can continue to thrive? Because I don't help them get on stages and do the speaking piece of it, those are just conversations that we've had um, w with me giving them ideas, right? So I should be saying, you need to go check out the people over at the green room or go talk to you know, Advance Your Reach because they probably have better speaker advice for you. Um, I, my advice and what I have done is just focus on your clients and deliver qual quality services to them virtually for now, right? We still want to get together and I'm a hugger. I want to you know, get together and hug my author's necks. We spend a lot of time together, so we build really close relationships, right? If you spend six or nine months helping somebody create something so personal as their book, you know their, their spouse's names and you've developed relationships with them. We want to get out there and get together. But right now we're just in this time where we don't have that option. So just be of service. Stay true to your, your, your core, which for me is integrity and um, creating a book that they're going to be proud of. So I don't know that I've shifted as much as some people have shifted. I do have a friend. We just finished her book. She's a friend now. <laughs> we just finished her book uh, after a year of working on it. Her spouse is a speaker. 
and their business went from he's gone all the time to he hasn't left the house in a year, right? Or 10 months or whatever, really, really impacted their lives significantly. Um, and I don't even know how they've survived it, but she said it's been such a growing and learning experience. Um, they have just shifted to all online and it's working, mm -hmm. right? Speakers where people are at. That's where, that's where it's working. People are speaking and I'm assuming that you help with that as well, right? In the yeah, I mean, we, COVID we space to, we're in. Yeah, we shifted to digital stages and, you know, at the beginning it was a lot of podcasts because those are the digital stages that you can reliably mm -hmm. find. And then right. as more and more of these summits have come out, you know, now, now, you know, we've really shifted our focus back to live. You know, we know we love podcasts, obviously, and they're a great sure. way to reach an audience. But, you know, when you're trying to make an impact and really engage with a live audience, nothing beats a live experience. So we're, right. we're now trying to focus again on, you know, okay, if your summit's pre-recorded, we'd really prefer if our speaker was able to do it live. If everyone else is doing pre-recorded, can we make their session a special live? And then the event planners are like, oh yeah, of course. You know, they're trying to make oh. it easy. They're trying to accommodate um, everyone. But, you know, we we believe, you know, what's going to be the best ROI for our clients? Like you, you know, you're, we're thinking about what's the best strategy and the strategy right. with pre-recorded just isn't as impactful at times. So um, that's, that's kind of how we've shifted. And I'm sure your speaking business has shifted to virtual in the, in the short term right now yep. as well, but we're all looking forward to the future and, and looking to when we can all start to have smaller events and bigger and bigger events. And um, I'm sure it won't be too long before, you know, we're doing that. And then there's going to be the whole new world of hybrid events and how people can yes. still like, you know, and because I think accessibility is a big, a big part of this new shift as well. Like you started out with talking about the ADA. I think events, you know, have a long time, maybe not been as accommodating. And for some people who mm -hmm. just honestly can't travel or can't leave their homes. So I, I love that maybe this is going to open up a whole new world of opportunity and invite people into experiences that they maybe never were able to participate in. Like other guests have shared, they've heard that from people who are international or who, you know, couldn't afford to attend a conference and now they can do it online. Um, and I don't want to lose that in the future. I think there's going to be some great creative ways to do that. So we're coming towards the end of our interview here and there's a couple questions we always like to ask our guests. So okay. um, one thing I, I want to um, ask is, you know, was there a speaker or someone along the way for you that made a big impact on you or in, influenced you to, you know, whatever it is in your business or just personally? Um, there's been a lot of them actually. <laughs> um, in 2009, we moved to Florida um, from the Pacific Northwest, we moved to Florida and that was a big shift in our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started following Michael Hyatt, right? He comes from the, the publishing world and, um, and speaks and writes. And so it just really connected with him. And so I've actually been a part of his platform university since inception. And, and actually that's where I learned about Pete mm -hmm. was through Michael Hyatt. So that's how I ended up as part of Rise Up because of Michael Hyatt. So um, lots and lots of people, lots of big names that, that I enjoy, but Michael Hyatt has probably been the most impactful um, that made me go, yes, <laughs> yes, you're speaking my language. He writes, he speaks, and this is what I'm preaching to people. So he leads, he writes, speaks, that. and leads. So yeah, he speaks to yeah. my soul. Michael's a, a great friend and client of ours and, and just excited to always work with his team and, and learn about how the innovative things they're doing in their business, even beyond the content they share. They just, they have an incredible um, culture and, and company. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's great. Um, you know, and, and as we wrap up here, Claire, how can our listeners get in touch with you and learn more about what you do and, and everything else? So of course you can go to clairerose.com and learn about writing, speaking, and leading. We've actually just shifted over to uh, the Kajabi platform. So that's been kind of exciting and fun for me. Um, but you can learn the basics there. You can always email me at hello at clararose.com. Um, those are probably the best places to get me. And I'm, I'm always in there. So 
You can hop on Facebook, of course, and find me, Claire Rose, Intentional Influence. And then every Friday on webeamtv.com is my Friday show. And I'm always having either tips, tricks, tools, resources, hacks, you know, whatever to help you learn to strategically and intentionally cultivate influence and grow your business. Or I have special guests who come on and share their expertise as well. So those are the places that you can find me. I'd love to connect with them. Amazing. So we'll, we'll have all those um, links in the show notes and you can check that out and check out more episodes or wherever you listen to podcasts um, inside the green room with PV3. Thank you so much for joining us inside the green room. I'm Blair Nichols, your co-host. And if you're a meeting planner or event professional, we have been live in our Facebook group, Your Events Matter. So you can join us there next time if you want to be part of the conversation. Um, and obviously check out our podcast uh, webpage inside the green room podcast.com. We've got some great resources. You can learn about how to work with us or um, just download some great resources to help in your business. So um, thank you all again for joining us inside the green room and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.